Today is a very exciting day because I'm finally taking my vintage lenses and converting them into cine lenses. So what I'm gonna do to convert these vintage lenses into cine lenses is basically fit them with a follow focus gear and put an adapter in front so I can use the same filters with every single lens. And I'm also gonna go through a couple of different options because this is actually my second time converting these lenses. I already bought once cheaper versions of the things that I'm putting today. So I was already using this rubber focus gears that I put on the lenses and this like cheap Amazon adapters that I was using to put the filters. So I'm actually gonna change this element for more expensive elements and I'm gonna explain why. I bought most of these pieces through Simod lenses. They're made here in Canada, so the shipping was really quick and that was basically the reason why I chose this. First, let me introduce the lenses that I'm converting. So I'm converting three lenses. They are all in M42 mount. And funny enough, this set is not from the same brand. A lot of people will try to build a set from the same brand to get the same kind of look. In my case, I'm not using this for professional work. It's for my own personal use and just for fun. So like, I don't need them to match perfectly. And when I tested this mismatch set, actually it fits pretty well. Without further ado, these are the lenses that I'm gonna be converting today. This is a Kitstar 28 millimeter. I bought this thing for super cheap, like $20, I think. And it's 28 millimeters, 2.8. I didn't find a lot of reviews online about it. I took a bet and it's really, really good. The second lens is probably the most famous M42 lens, which is a Helios 44 M4, 58 millimeters. This is not the vintage model that's more famous, but it's like a newer version. It's still really good and it matches really well with the 28 millimeter. And the final lens is another lens that I bought on a whim and I just saw it online for like 30 bucks and I decided to take a risk on it. It's a Vivitar 20 millimeter. The only downside is that the aperture is just 3.8, but I love the distortion. I love the look on this lens. It's probably my favorite wide angle lens I've ever used. So let's start first with the 20 millimeters. For this lens, the conversion is a lot simpler because I decided not to buy a metal focus ring for it. I'm actually gonna use one of the rubber ones I already had. And that's because the focus on this lens works really well. It's really smooth, I don't need to force it. And weirdly enough, the diameter of the lens is so big that it kind of stretches the ring enough so that it's tied against it. And the combination of those two things make this rubber ring work perfectly on it. By all means, these rubber rings are not perfect as we're gonna see when I move on to the next lenses. But in some instances, they might work well. What I am changing though, it's the front ring. I already have an adapter here, and this is like a cheap adapter I bought on Amazon. It's really thin. It does what it's supposed to do, which is convert the 82 millimeter front ring to a 77 millimeter front ring so I can put my filter on it. The problem comes when I use my matte box. I have a small rig matte box that attaches directly to my lens. To attach this to the lens, it has a snap-on adapter that basically only works with 80 millimeters front diameter. And that's why I chose to buy these adapters from Simod lenses. Cause the specs of this is 77 millimeter front thread for the lenses, but also 80 millimeters outside diameter. So in theory, the MacBook should fit perfectly with this. The other problem with these Amazon adapters is that they're not all the same size. It's millimeters, like there's a millimeter difference, but like one, it's really loose, while this one fits pretty nice and tight. But because they're too thin, they slide in way too much. So now it's time to adapt and then test on this thing. This is an 82 to 77 millimeter front thread adapter and that makes it fit perfectly. Check. Ah, much better. I didn't even tighten it and it's really solid on it. And now because I've adapted the front of the lens, of course the cap doesn't fit anymore. So I just got this cheap 77 millimeter front caps from Amazon. There you go, that's it. First in a lens, convert it. Then let's go to the 28. And for this lens, I will install the new focus ring. In this other two lenses, it's a lot harder to move the focus ring. So when I had this ones on, my follow focus kept slipping on them, which is why I decided to go for the metal ones. This ring is metal. It's just one size. And as you can see, it's a lot bigger than my lens, but it comes with several inserts to adapt that ring to the size of your lens. This one I bought is 62 to 65 millimeters and it comes with rubber rings for every single one. So like 62 millimeters, 63, 64, and 65. 
and it also comes with a little roll of tape that is used to micro adjust the diameter. So if one of these rings is a little bit too big and the other one is too small, you can add a layer of this tape to get to the right fit. In this case, this lens is a 63. So I take my 63 millimeter rubber band and I place this inside of the metal ring. There's like a little ridge inside where it fits perfectly. Pretty well designed, I really like this. And then you have a seamless ring like this with the right rubber insert inside for the size of your lens and the outside is metal so that it doesn't slip. This fits really tight on my lens so I think I might not need the tape. Yeah, this is really tight. Even if the focus gear is really hard to move, it follows with me, it doesn't slip at all. At the end, I'm gonna try with my focus focus to see if it slips or not. Now we're doing the front ring. This is 55 to 77. If you see the same one from Amazon, you're gonna see a huge difference in width. This is double the depth of this one, and that's gonna help with the matte box. Damn, it looks good. I like how this looks. Again, I'm gonna test it with the matte box just to see. It fits perfectly, it's amazing. And I also forgot to say that the focus rings come with this little stoppers. So if you have one of more modern lens that just keeps rolling eternally, you can put focus stoppers on them. It's good to know if you have more modern lenses, the kit comes with it. And now I'm just gonna do the Helios real quick. It should be, the process should be exactly the same. This lens is a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna use a 62 millimeter insert, uh, but it, feels like it's gonna be a little bit more loose. So I might need to use the tape for this. Yeah, this is a little bit looser. Like it just goes in and out very quickly. I didn't have to press anything. So for sure I'll need to use the tape. I need to watch the tutorial on this first. <laughs> now installing the ring onto your lens is easy. First, I actually had to watch the tutorial to make sure I was not screwing up this tape thing. And one crucial step that I missed before is that they recommend putting the focus to infinity before fitting in the ring. If you're doing this, just watch the tutorial before you do it. Don't do what I do. And yeah, to apply the shim tape, you basically apply the tape inside of the metal ring before putting the rubber ring in. I hope this is enough. Oh, it's actually like the exact size, so. It's the exact width as a little edge right here, so it's really easy to put in. After the tape is inside the metal ring, you put the rubber ring in. Focus to infinity. Yeah, that's a lot tighter. It's really good. Yeah, now it doesn't move. Like, no matter how much I roll it, it rotates the whole lens. And then, the last front ring, which is a 52-277. And that's it. My three lenses are cine-converted. So now I'm gonna rig up my camera to try it with the whole thing, the matte box and the photo focus and see if it slips or not. It's done, I tested the three lenses with the photo focus and the matte box and they all work perfectly. And you know how in the beginning I said like, oh, I don't wanna spend the extra 60 bucks to get another focus ring? Well, I should have. There's a day and night difference between these rubber things and the metal gears. Don't get me wrong, it works and for $2 it's fine, but it feels flimsier and comparing the focus experience with the metal rings, there is a huge difference. This feels smoothier, like it turns, but it doesn't feel as responsive as pulling focus with these gears. The moment I tried these gears, it feels like it's attached to the lens. It feels like if it was screwed into the lens. I'm really happy with the products. The knurled front rings are also really nice. They are deep enough to be flushed against the matte box. And because they're knurled and not flat, that creates friction. So the matte box doesn't come out. They all fit, so they are 80 millimeters in size and the filter fits as well on every single one. I'm super happy with the quality of this cine conversion. I wish I had done it sooner. It is really worth it if you wanna use your camera in a rig. This really makes it feel like a tiny cinema lens. And if you're doubting about it, I would say definitely do it. It's worth every single penny. I hope some information was useful for you if you're looking to do this with your own lenses. If you have any question about the process or doubts, you can leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe. And yeah, with that done, see you next time.